Hey everyone, this is your friendly neighborhood accountant, Eric Knowledgeless Stockhausen. Today we're going to dive into the monetization survey results that I um, just finished collecting. So for those who didn't know, a few days ago I released a survey to the Gwent community asking them various questions about how things are priced and things they would like to buy in Gwent. If you want to look at the data I collected, the link is in the description. Now, without further ado, let's get into some of this data. First things first, we're going to get meta and talk about the data. Over 600 respondents um, answered the survey, and I'm very thankful for that. It allowed me to uh, break people down into different populations and correlate data. Most of the respondents came from Reddit. That skews the data a certain direction because Reddit doesn't behave like the Gwent community as a whole or the true population of Gwent. There was a 91 completion rate. Again, thank you guys. Um, that I attribute mostly to the fact that the survey was really short, um, take you two or three minutes to complete. But nevertheless, nevertheless thank you guys for filling out the re um, survey. Now let's go and get into that data. Demographics was the first page on the survey. We're going to go through a few correlations. The first one has to do with age to spending because I discovered that age was the best indicator that a person spent more on Gwent. Younger players, 13 to 17 year olds, were the most likely to be free to play and this is understandable. Most kids do not have access to their parents' debit card. As we get older and older, they spend, tend to spend more and more. And this is what this chart kind of demonstrates. The next thing I dived into was whether or not Gwent was pay to win. While there is a positive correlation between money spent and being over 4,000 MMR, there's a much stronger correlation for how much you play each week. It's important to note that 45% of the respondents who claim to be over 4,000 MMR paid less, $5 or less on Gwent. Now note that um, I use approximately about certain numbers because there's also a, uh, there's an international community for playing Gwent and I, you have to factor in the euros and pounds and uh, zlata that are being used here. So that's, that's why I didn't do price ranges or ask players specifically how much they spent. Only 12% of respondents claim to have purchased meteorite powder. This is likely a lot larger than the number I would have gotten if I had asked a month ago before the big discount on meteorite powder. This is problematic seeing that there is a whole store dedicated to meteorite powder in the Gwent game. And CD Projekt is spending a lot of time making very good premium cards, which you can get through this powder. I wonder how um, they will get these prices up, maybe by bundling uh, the powder with other products. We'll have to see. On page two of my three page uh, survey, I asked players their likelihood of them purchasing various items. The first question had to do with what they would buy after the midwinter update. The most popular item was the starter pack with 38% claiming that they would be likely or very likely to purchase one. Meteorite powder was the least popular at 5% and kegs at 30% likely and very likely. Now it might seem concerning that only 38% of players want, I mean 30% want to buy kegs. But you have to remember that um, free-to-play games tend to focus on the players who spend the most, and the players who spend the most aren't the majority of players. In fact, uh, the majority of players in Gwent, according to the Reddit, um, spent less than $15. One of the most consistently requested purchasable items for Gwent that I've seen in the forums has to be premium portraits or avatars of their favorite Witcher characters. I asked players how likely they would be to purchase um, these portraits at three or five dollars respectively. 
at $3, about 47% of players polled at, um, said they would be likely or very likely to purchase um, one portrait. At $5, it goes down significantly, where only 15% approximately were likely or very likely to purchase. Now, in the future, I want to ask players how likely they would purchase portraits in a bundle, maybe with other portraits or with um, special kegs or a pre-made deck. A lot of questions to be done there, but that's the future. The next question I asked players was their willingness to buy Thornbreaker at various prices. I started at $20 or 16 euros and went all the way up to $50 or 40 euros. As you can see, there's a nice curve with a, if you look at the blue of willingness to purchase going down and further down. I wanted to figure out what the best price for Thronebreaker would have to be to generate the most revenue for CD Projekt Red. I did this by taking the data from the previous chart and weighing um, players' answers in 25% increments. This is my assumption that I'm putting in there. Where 0% was for like 0% willing to buy for very unlikely and all the way up to 100% willing to buy at very likely. I know it isn't perfect, but it should approximate uh, the price demand curve. So after weighing all the percentages together, I came up with this middle column, average percentage buying, and I multiplied it by the price to determine the average revenue per player. Even though the percentage of buying goes down, because the price is going up, we actually see more revenue generated at the $30.25 Euro mark than at the $20.16 Euro mark. I approximated the curve that the average revenue per player would take given these different prices. Um, and I found that the best, given this data, would have been the maximum would be between $25 and $30. The issue here is that I didn't ask players in $5 increments, which would have made the data much more accurate and made a better curve. And I also, uh, most of the players are coming from the Reddit community, so they might have different uh, feelings about what is a good price for a single player campaign. On the third and final page of the survey, I asked players their positions on various issues uh, revolving around monetization in Gwent. Now for the sake of readability, um, see that cyan color in the middle of these bars? That's the unsure category. Everything on the right of it is agreement while everything on the left of it is disagreement. The first statement I had players evaluate was, I feel like Gwent offers me many opportunities to purchase virtual items I want. Most players agreed. Uh, the second one is, I dislike the randomness of kegs. I want certainty in what I am buying. Um, most people disagreed. Uh, people are very comfortable with kegs. The reason why I brought this up was because of the whole loot box um, debate that's going on. The third one was, I feel like the game is reasonably affordable. Overwhelming majority of players agree with that statement. However, here's an interesting twist. On the next one I asked players, uh, or stated, I feel like there are too few commons in the card pool making the game too expensive. So even though a lot of players think, say that uh, the game is reasonably affordable, a lot of players also think that the, uh, there are too few common cards in the pool making it expensive. I think that the overlap of this probably means that uh, people have this theoretical belief that there should be a certain amount of common cards in the card pool and are not really taking into account the practical impact of um, having so many rares on their wallet. The game is still reasonably affordable to them. Now, there is the question of whether or not um, they're also thinking about the, how few comments have been revealed um, in the midwinter update, so which would make the game more expensive if there were um, no comments revealed or added to the game. 
So this is so the it's interesting to analyze these two questions next to each other. On the second to last, the penultimate um, statement, I said I wouldn't mind Gwent becoming slightly more expensive if that meant the game was making a larger profit for CD Projekt. Well, more than people, uh, more people agreed than disagreed with this, but it was very kind of, it was the largest unsure category of all of them. And I kind of expected that. Uh, there seems to be a willingness amongst players to try to find a way to pitch in, to make, um, make CD Projekt successful. We got some, we got, we got some fans on the subreddit. The final statement is, I dislike the idea of getting leaders from kegs. Now this was a hot button issue for the community when the survey came out, and most players dislike the idea of getting leaders from kegs. There's still a small um, portion of players that disagree with that and think that getting leaders from kegs is fine. It'll be interesting to see how players' attitudes change over time after the midwinter update releases and players get to see how likely they are to get those new leaders. There was a single optional write-in question on the survey where players were asked what they would like to purchase but cannot purchase currently in Gwent. I went in and uh, curated the almost 200 write-in answers to that question and came up with these results. The most popular of the cosmetic items requested were game boards. Um, Players um, elaborated by saying, maybe I can customize each of my leaders to have a different game board when I play them or have faction specific ones. Some people wanted randomly picked boards from a pool of boards, maybe flashy effects and stuff like that. Personally, I would like a board that's made out of glass and I can see my avatar's legs dangling down from underneath the board. That'd be funny. <laughs> um, contenders were um, different kinds of avatars for their favorite characters, taunts, different coins, alternative card art, and backs. A lot of things there in the cosmetic section. Amongst the mer uh, content and merchandise, we had um, people wanted bundles that they could purchase. I, I singled it out with festive holiday bundles because the midwinter update was coming up and that's what players were thinking at the time. They wanted things similar to a starter pack in in general uh, some people wanted to buy physical cards i actually own physical cards of gwent uh, but these are based on the witcher 3 versions uh, clothes in a mug you know like standard merch faction kegs uh, so if you buy that keg you only get cards of that faction and of course leaks <laughs> people want to buy the leaks now for some honorable mentions. These were not popular requests, but they um, they caught my attention while I was curating all the answers. Um, my favorite was the bourgeois avatar idea. I was actually thinking about that when I wrote the question for the survey while I was in my bed just typing on my phone. Um, <laughs> um, another one was the Gaunter and Ogirt avatars. Um, two players in the comment section for the Reddit post uh, mentioned that and I thought here's an honorable mention for you guys cool idea I definitely want a Gaunter avatar some um, probably a competitive player or a streamer wants an alternative name entry for so like if they put in pick this option um, players don't know who they are they just come up as like a random number or no name or anonymous this prevents people from stream sniping them or emoting like a hundred times. Cool idea, but I don't think that you should make that a purchasable item. I think that just should be an, in the um, option section. It'd be cool if they implemented that. Totally agree. Um, honorable mention for that. Custom spell effects. Um, so let's say you play Azure Thunder and you put this custom spell, of, like you do something to the card and it does something fancy. We're gonna get into that more into that in the next slide. Uh, and then tournament tickets. So a lot of players wanna play in tournament style uh, competitions in the client, as opposed to going to a physical place like Vienna. Now, of course, I'm uh, sure a lot of players want to um, see Life Coach's Mansion and get a tournament ticket to that. But um, falling short of that, they will go with a virtual ticket.
An ultimate honorable mention goes to user, Reddit user, uh, Rideite, who suggests these kind of gems. I would probably change gems to runes that you can insert into uh, your cards to give them different kind of effects. A kinetic gem will make them have a more dramatic effect on the board, like they hang around and then they do something flashy. Like an Azure's Thunder that there's like pushing, kind of. Uh, um, acoustic gem will make them have a premium card sound. And a tally gem, which is one of the things I find more, most interesting, will give a card a kind of like a number that appears on top of it. So like if you play Scorch a lot, it will tell you, tell everybody how much damage you've done with Scorches in a given season. So let's say you play a lot of Scorches and you have like this number like 3,000 above your Scorch card. That'd be pretty cool. Um, I think this is a nice cosmetic direction. I recommend you guys read through this and t um, tell um, um, right Eye what you think. Now, before I go, I would like to, again, thank everybody who um, participated in the survey. Uh, I also would like to mention that um, this video co did cost me a little bit of money to make. It cost me about $35 to do the survey, to conduct the survey. So if you want to uh, give me a little tip, there's a little tip jar in the bottom. Thanks for watching and have a good day. And have a round of Gwent on me. <laughs>